Every time something bad happens to you, you are your most competitive if you are motivated by it. Barring is a fantastic way to put it out, but also in every single thing that happens in your life. Whenever anything bad happens to you, you can be motivated by it. Who I am and who I say I am, I am. No more lies. No more skirting the truth. No more bullshit. And that is worth every dime I've ever made in my life. You're just David Goggins. You're nobody. Because that's where my growth is. That's where my willpower comes from. And that's where it stays. You know how much money you have in the bank. Not the car you drive. Not the contents of your wallet. In the end, you are the person who achieved those things. And to achieve those things, you have to have the willpower and the right mindset. Be the person you want to be. When you become the right person and you become a 10, you become a leader. Why? Because 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, they follow you. And as I became a man, my wife started doing things that she wouldn't do when I was a boy. And my professors started doing things they wouldn't do when I was a boy. And business to start doing things for me that they wouldn't do when I was a boy. But when I became a man, I don't want you to think leadership is you're over somebody. <laughs> I don't want you to think leadership is a title because it's not. Le leadership is you become. You don't even want to hear this. It sounds so barbaric. That's the pride in which you have as a man. Is that you see your mom, you see your girl, you see your kids, you see all this shit. You see them doing well. That's all a real man wants. They don't give a fuck about how they dress, how they look, what they're driving. They don't give a shit. Because why? Your trophies are your family and they're all walking around. Every man that sees you, they, they see you walking in with some sweatpants and shit, but they know your family's fucking balling. Because you put the fucking time in, you put the effort in, you put the work in, and as a man, we don't want none of that shit. We just want fucking respect. And that's what men don't give a fuck about now. But the one thing I want is for my family to look at me and say, that's the man. I love everyone more than myself. I love my children more than I love myself. I would die for my brother. I would die for my mother. I, I love a bunch of people more than myself. In fact, my entire life is putting people above me, putting other people's happiness above me. I believe that's what men do. Men stayed on the Titanic for the women and children. When you're a man, you're responsible for other people's physical and emotional happiness, of course. I wake up every day and work so that other people can enjoy the fruits of my labor. That's all I do. Every single person I love, in many ways I love more than I love myself. And I think that every man who is capable is exactly the same. It's all in your mind. Whatever you hold in your mind will tend to occur in your life. If you continue to believe as you have always believed, you will continue to act as you have always acted. You will continue to get what you have always gotten. If you want different results in your life or your work, all you have to do is change your mind. Make up your own mission statement. What do you want to be in life? And once you do that, now you can work with somebody to get better. You can work with yourself to get better. But until you know what you want to stand for, you will always just be sitting down. You'll never stand for anything. They're trying to say to people effectively, you'll never be anything. And you don't stand a chance of ever being anything. And I think that that makes people who aren't anything feel a little bit better about themselves. It's cope. If someone were to come to me and say, Andrew, you're mixed race, you're from a single mother household, you're never going to be rich, I'll say, watch me. Corinthians 15, 58. You lack focus, not potential. You lack consistency, not ability. You lack strategy, not resources. You lack discipline, not opportunities. Like, I believe in life, you got two separate people. You got champions, right? And they go through things in life that are self-inflicted. They bring it upon themselves, they get through it, they say, man, I got through it. And then you got warriors. Right? They walk outside, the wind hits them, knocks them down, they pick up their stuff, they adjust and they get moving and they deal with the adversity that they didn't expect. They set their perspective right and they figure out a way to embrace it and add value to every environment that they go into and every person's life that they come in contact with. I want you to take it personal. And my personal question to you is why not you? You've got the brains, you can make decisions, you can study the plan, you can change your life, you can grow immensely in the next few years, you can make your dreams come true, you can build a financial wall around your family nothing can get through, you can become healthy, you can become powerful, why not you? If you decide to be rich today, who gonna stop you? Who? If you decide
decide you want to be rich, all you got to do is start. Why not? Who going to stop you? Unless you tell it to the wrong person. Mama, mama, listen to me. I'm going to be rich. Anybody rich in this family? Go in there and sit down somewhere. Get yourself a good job. Oh, mama, you must be right. No, mama could be wrong. Because what you have in your imagination, God didn't show it to your mama. I'm sorry. He showed it to you. Life's hard, it's always gonna be hard, it's always gonna suck, it always has. The only way to get out is to become excellent and perform at a level where your echelon is so high that you get to live this brand new experience. You need to become strong and smart and interesting and charismatic. You need to become rich, powerful, well-known, connected. You need to do it. But can all men do that? No. So, okay. But I have to tell them the truth. No such thing as faking it before you make it, no. You see it and you make it come true. You make everybody else accept your version of reality. You see a version of yourself inside of your mind and when other people do not see it, when they look at you, you bend space time and change your outward projection, your avatar, so others view you exactly the way you see yourself. It is called belief. You must have a vision for who you could be. There is a version of you in the world which is important, which is respected, which is rich, which is capable, which is charismatic and funny and interesting. With big arms and a long Johnson. You're not him yet, but you need to make a plan to become that person. That person exists. You have to make it come true. What do you mean, don't make dreams your master? A lot of people sit back and they dream about being a sports figure, or dream about being a SEAL, or dream about being an astronaut, and all it is is a motherfucking dream. They don't put the work behind the dream. That dream has become their fucking master. When you become the master of your fucking dream is when you say, I want to go be a Navy SEAL. And you say, okay, I'm going to lose 106 pounds in less than three fucking months. The dream was the one thing I thought about and the dream was now gone. Now what comes in, the dream goes away and the fucking laundry list of fucking details and tasks come up. Gotta do this, gotta do this, gotta do this, gotta do this. That's when you become the master of your dream. So a lot of people out there dreaming. If you don't go out there and give 120%, you're not a man. A man don't always put forth effort and accomplish his goals. As men, we fail too. We don't always do everything perfect, but if you're a real man, you try. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you're a real man, you try. I said my, my, my biological father wasn't no real man, not because I'm mad at my man, but he, didn't, he, he wasn't there. I don't care what you believe in. It doesn't matter. I'm not judging anybody. But let's say my thing is God. You get to heaven, I'm 300 pounds, I sit down, I was a cockroach, terminated my whole life, and we're sitting down just like this, you're God and I'm David. Now look at this chart, and on the chart it has all these different things, but my name's on it. But these things aren't me. I was going to change the world, I was going to set records, I was going to be a Navy SEAL, I was going to be honored here, honored there. And I'm like, God, I was, this isn't me. Like it says David Goggins, I was an Ecolab guy, I sprayed for cockroaches, and I'm 300 pounds, I said, here, I'm 185. And God goes, no, that's who you were supposed to be. My biggest fear in life is that there is a final resting place in this world and there's a final judgment and you talk to something much bigger than you. I don't want to sit down and have a conversation with someone with something that says, you're in heaven, this is what you should have been on earth. Don't be upset by the results you didn't get from the work you did not do. Don't be upset. I don't want you to be upset. I don't want you to be angry. I want you to be like, I didn't get the results because I didn't do the work.